Rivian is a very interesting new player in the U.S. Uh, automotive market. Um, like Tesla, it's a pure EV company started by RJ Scaringe actually several years ago, but it's in production now for about three years. It arrived as the best funded automotive startup in U.S. history and probably in global automotive history, raising $11 billion from private investors and then another $13 billion when it IPO'd in 2021. It was a bit slow uh, in its launch because it launched uh, right in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. It, like other companies, was hit by the uh, global supply chain crisis, which made it very difficult and very expensive to get electronic parts. The company, though, has weathered those storms and actually expanded pretty quickly uh, last year. But the market wants a lot more. The stock has fallen precipitously about 90 percent from its IPO in November 2021. It's now trading for less than 20 bucks a share. Um, it was once trading at nearly $130 a share. So it's it's really run into some problems in the market. And that's because the market wants to see a lot of growth very quickly. It did launch uh, three vehicles in a very short uh, amount of time. The R1T pickup truck, the R1S SUV, and its electric uh, delivery van, which has been used by Amazon, but it's now being um, sold to other uh, commercial delivery companies. The company is sort of at an interesting crossroads now where it came to market as a premium EV manufacturer. It's now getting ready to reposition and sell a much more broadly affordable uh, EV, the R2. Uh, that will also take it into direct competition with models like the Tesla Model Y and the Ford Mach-E the Kia EV6, all of which are sort of priced in that mid to low $40,000 range. So I wanted to go uh, up and meet with RJ at Rivian's Palo Alto tech offices to sort of catch up and see how things are going. If you look at the average transaction price of a vehicle, any vehicle in the United States, it's uh, around $48,000. So we think that's a really important sweet spot to be in that range to really create a, a viable option for customers that are coming out of combustion-powered vehicles into something very different. As a company, uh, the R1 product was intended to act as our handshake with the world. So it introduces the way we approach technology, the way we approach product decisions, the way we approach the, the positioning of the brand and the company. But really, as a, from a price point point of view, it, it limits the number of customers that can actually access the brand. And so R2 really greatly expands the, the relevance of Rivian to a much broader set of addressable market, uh, uh, consumers. And so this is, this is incredibly important. I've, I've never been as excited as I am about a product as, as I feel for, for R2. But we're gonna see 100% of new vehicle sales in the not too distant future be electric. Now, whether that's five years from now, 10 years from now, or 25 years from now, I think that has a lot to do uh, with both policy, uh, which is certainly driving towards that, but also creating really interesting choices for consumers. And today we, we have a lack of choice in the market and I think that has a lot of impact on the overall rate at which we can grow. And it's one of the reasons we're so excited about R2. You know, in, in the R1 price category, we've, we've really done a great job of pulling a lot of customers out of combustion powered vehicles. Well over half of our customers have never owned an EV before. And the opportunity in that lower price segment really exists for something that's very different, very unique to draw new, new, um, new consumers into, into electrification. From an adoption point of view, customers need to understand really what an electric vehicle represents in terms of changes to your everyday living with a vehicle. And, and one of the biggest is that you have effectively a, tr a refueling station in your garage. So today when you think about filling up your car, if it's a combustion powered vehicle, you go to a gas station the vast majority of charging actually happens in your home. Uh, so somewhere between, depending on the brand and the vehicle, somewhere between 90 and 95% of the charging is typically happening at home at night. And so the infrastructure that's being created, you know, we're building a charging infrastructure, we call it our Rivian Adventure Network. Tesla's done a great job with its supercharger network. Uh, we're gonna have our customers be able to access that network here very soon. That infrastructure really supports the ability to go on longer trips. So to go from San Francisco to LA, New York to Washington DC, these types of trips. For us, reliability and quality are, are paramount to how we're developing our products. And 
with a lot of new technology, new features in the vehicle, uh, that's even more important. You know, a lot of times these would be customers, as I said, first exposure to an electric vehicle. The way that we're managing quality in our plant and the focus we put on it, and then the way that we design quality in from a reliability point of view is really key. And so we've built sensors into the vehicle with the specific purpose of, of acting as a prognostics platform to predict service issues, damage to the vehicle, uh, such that we avoid customers ever being surprised. So if there is something that's gone wrong, if the vehicle's been off-roading and something was, was damaged, we can sense that and we can then schedule uh, pre preemptively a repair of the vehicle. If we do everything we can to try to understand customer sentiment, so we have lots of ways of interacting directly with user groups, uh, as well as looking at some of the third parties that do assessments of customer satisfaction. We were really pleased to have in our first year of production with our first product, JD Power, rank Rivian as the number one vehicle from a customer satisfaction point of view with the highest likelihood of a repurchase, which is a great indication of how the ownership experience is and how much our customers are enjoying the product and, and would like to buy another Rivian in the future. We are constantly looking for how we can improve the vehicles. And one of the things we, we really have leaned into is the ability to continually update the software in the vehicle. And every three or four weeks, we have an over-the-air update that adds new features, new content. And those feature sets and improvements are coming from feedback. So if customers are saying, hey, we really like this, this, and this, you know, we sit with our software team and we say, well, let's go develop some, some new features that deliver to that. And it's a very dynamic list. Uh, uh, you know, Myself and our head of software, every week we sit down and go through what are our priorities. And that priority stack can be refactored based upon what we're hearing from customers. Thank you.